Welcome friends, it's Miss Gisa. I have a question for you. Do you have a messy room or a clean room? Well, today's story is about a little boy named Miles who has a very messy room and he becomes friends with another messy person. The story is called The Bear in the Chair. And it's written by Steve Abramson and illustrated by Susan Ehrlich. Living deep beneath a pile of clothes and toys was an eight-year-old boy with a wild imagination. His name was Miles, or as his mom would call him, Messy Miles. Yesterday, Miles pretended he was an astronaut. The day before, he was a wizard. And the day before that, he was a pirate. But today, Miles pretended to be a king. Messy Miles, king of sloppy, his mom called out. I command you to clean up this room. But King Miles, proud of the messes he made, would not relent. I will do no such thing, he proclaimed. I am king and no one commands a king. But unknown to King Miles, his mom had a plan. A plan so devious, not even a young boy pretending to be a king could have seen it coming. She knew the eight spoken words that could dethrone King Miles. Don't make me call your father up here, she said aloud. Oh no, not that, King Miles thought. If both parents were mad at him, he'd get in trouble for sure. King Miles knew he was conquered. He removed his toy crown and turned back into a regular boy. Oh, all right, I'll clean up, Miles disappointedly said. Miles then picked up his first toy in defeat. But Miles wasn't the only one who enjoyed making big messes. All the way across town at the world's greatest traveling circus lived a very talented circus bear by the name of Moxley. Moxley, who could spin plates on top of his nose while juggling balls with spectacular throws as he crossed a tightrope on his toes, was the highlight of all the shows. And after each and every trick that Moxley performed, he would always return to his favorite big blue chair placed in the center of the ring. He loved that chair. Moxley was the circus's main attraction, but he was also the circus's biggest problem. Anywhere and everywhere, Moxley made a mess. All around the circus, it was quite a stress. He would drop his food every place he went and interrupt the circus acts to great extent. The clowns would frown, the monkeys were down, and there was Moxley causing trouble round and round. Not even his friend and caretaker, the man in the funny red coat and black top hat, could get Moxley to clean up after himself and behave. As the man in the funny red coat entered Moxley's very messy tent, he found his furry friend sitting in his big blue chair, juggling half a dozen eggs. Moxley, why do you always make such a mess? asked the man in the funny red coat. Moxley juggled the eggs back into the egg carton. He then carelessly tossed the carton over his shoulder where the eggs flew out and broke all over the floor. The man in the funny red coat was not happy. I can no longer put up with such messy behavior, my furry friend. When I get back, I want to see this tent cleaned from top to bottom, or you will not get to leave the circus and go into town, warned the man in the funny red coat. This news saddened Moxley greatly. The man in the funny red coat always took Moxley to explore each new town the circus traveled to. But this time, Moxley knew he would not be going anywhere if he did not clean up his tent and behave. So Moxley picked up one of the broken eggshells from the floor and tossed it into the trash bucket. The man in the funny red coat nodded approvingly and left Moxley's tent, fully expecting that the next time he returned, the tent would be spotless. But Moxley, being a mischievous bear, wanted to go into town without cleaning his tent. 
he jumped into his favorite big blue chair and began to think, how could he get his reward without doing his work? He thought long and hard as he juggled six apples while eating them at the same time, of course. Because as everyone knows, bears love their apples. And while juggling his favorite snack, a great idea suddenly came to Moxley. For the first time ever, he would go into town himself. He knew this was a risk since the man in the funny red coat would surely be mad at him. But he was certain that he could get back to the circus before anyone knew he was gone. So Moxley threw the half-eaten apples onto the floor and snuck out of this big tent. He climbed to the top of one of the largest circus tents where in the distance he could see a great big town, much to his delight. Moxley then climbed back down, sneakily made his escape from the circus and began his exciting trip into town. On the roofs of cars, Moxley would ride. On the backs of buses, Moxley would hide. Finding a skateboard, Moxley would slide. Any which way to get to town, Moxley tried. And when Moxley finally reached the town, in and out of ice cream shops, he would bound, sneaking one flavor, two flavors, every flavor he could eat. So much ice cream, oh, such a treat. Then off to toy stores, Moxley would run. Aisle after aisle, he had lots of fun. There were toys over here and toys over there. He played with the toys everywhere. And as Moxley snuck from store to store, he left a mess that no one could ignore. All the townspeople wondered who could be the source. Well, it was Moxley, the talented circus bear, of course. But as the day went on, Moxley grew tired. He was ready to go home, but he had never been out on his own before and suddenly realized that he didn't know where home was. It could be a million miles away, at least in bear miles. Because, as everyone knows, one mile in people's mile is like a thousand miles in bear miles because bears don't ever travel. So from roof to roof, Moxley would leap. From window to window, Moxley would peek. He searched house to house on every street and would only stop to eat a treat. But as he continued to look around, the home he sought could not be found. So as hard as he tried, and he looked with purpose, he just couldn't find his way back to the world's greatest traveling circus. And just as Moxley was about to give up his search for the circus, he peeked into the window of one more home and finally found a familiar sight, his big blue chair in all its fabulous glory. But how did it end up here, in the room of this strange home? which was not his home. This was not the circus. On the other side of the window, a boy appeared, a tired boy, a boy so tired that he slumped into the big blue chair, the chair that Moxley believed to be his. This boy was Miles, Messy Miles, or as his mom would now call him, the boy who finally cleaned up his room. Mom, I'm done, Miles calls out. My room is clean. You can come down to dinner now, his mom yelled back. I will inspect your room after. Miles jumped from the big blue chair and ran out of his room in a hungry hurry. And this gave Moxley just the opportunity he was looking for. Moxley opened the window and climbed into the room. A room much too clean for a bear, especially a bear who liked a messy lair Moxley then noticed a toy chest at the foot of Miles's bed. As he opened it, his face lit up as he saw so many different things to play with. As he dug through the chest of toys, he found a baseball, a football, and a basketball. Oh joy, three different sports for Moxley to juggle. And Moxley just loved to juggle. But wait, what was that over there? As Moxley was juggling, he noticed a small fishbowl with a tiny lone goldfish inside. And as everyone knows, bears love goldfish, but goldfish do not love bears. With Moxley now focused on the goldfish, 
he clumsily tossed aside all three sports balls. The baseball shattered a house of building blocks, scattering the tiny toys throughout the air. The basketball flew speedily into a wastebasket, filling all the trash without any care. And the football knocked over a tray of marbles, which rolled across the floor everywhere. Moxley, completely unaware of the mess he had just made, hungrily approached his future snack. But he failed to notice the marbles that were scattered all over the floor. And as he stepped upon those marbles, he lost his balance. And into the closet, Moxley rolled, knocking down shelves of games new and old. Next into the dresser, he clumsily moved, toppling it over like a bear uncontrolled. Then into the chest of toys he bowled. Oh, what a mess this was to behold. And when Moxley finally stopped rolling around, he took one more step and fell to the ground. A laundry basket now covered his head, but as he removed it, a green fisherman's hat now sat on top instead. And as it turned out, Moxley liked his new hat. He decided to continue wearing it, but all this excitement had tired him out. And as everyone knows, bears tire easily. Moxley plopped down in the big blue chair, forgetting all about his goldfish snack to the delight of the goldfish. But Moxley wasn't going to get much rest because a short time later, the door to the room swung open and a very stuffed boy appeared. Miles, who had an appetite as big as a bear, had just finished eating what seemed like three dinners worth of food. As Miles looked into his room, he immediately noticed that this was not the same clean room he left just a short time ago. The room was a disaster. Not even messy Miles could have made a mess this big. Only a bear could have made this mess. A bear now sitting in Miles's chair. The tired circus bear wearing the green fisherman's hat waved to Miles. Miles hesitantly waved back. Mom, Miles yelled out, there's a bear in my chair. But his mom didn't believe him. That room better be clean when I get up there, young man, or you are in a lot of trouble she yelled back. But as Miles looked back at Moxley, he now found the silly bear jumping up and down on his bed. Moxley then did a backflip off the bed and landed in Miles' basketball, balancing himself as if it were a big wheel attached to his feet. He picked up several of Miles' toys along with the goldfish bowl and juggled them just as a circus bear would be expected to do. Miles' expression went from shock to amusement as he realized that Moxley was no ordinary bear. You must be a circus bear, Miles excitedly shouted out. Moxley carelessly tossed the juggling items aside and did a backflip into the big blue chair. He extended his arms as if to say, ta-da! Miles slowly approached Moxley and noticed a small chain around his neck with a name tag attached. He saw there was a message printed on it it read, Hi, I'm Moxley. I am a trained circus performer. If I wander off, please return me to the world's greatest traveling circus. You see, the man in the funny red coat knew that one day Moxley would sneak off on his own. So he gave him a gift, a name tag, so that everyone would know who Moxley was and how to help Moxley find his way home. You are a circus bear, Miles thrillingly said. Just then, Miles heard his mom's voice from right around the corner. I better be surprised when I come into that room, young man. Miles's mom wanted his room clean, and that is just what he had done. Messy Miles had finally cleaned up his room, only it wasn't clean, not even close. It was actually much worse than ever before. But wait, Miles could prove to his mom that he didn't mess up his room this time. It was a circus bear by the name of Moxley, who snuck into his room and made this mess. There's no way she'd be mad at him when she saw Moxley. And just as Miles' mom entered his room, her jaw dropped open. She was in shock. What is this, Miles' mom said, stunned. I did clean my room, Miles explained, but as you can see, it wasn't my fault. 
And whose fault was it? She said in disbelief. It was the bear in the chair, Miles confidently proclaimed. What bear in the chair, she asked. Miles didn't understand. Didn't his mom see the circus bear sitting in his chair? And as Miles turned to Moxley, the bear was no longer there. The bear had gone elsewhere. But, but mom, Miles pleaded, there was a bear in the chair. He was right there. He's a circus bear and he juggled my room into a mess. Miles, you know how I feel about lying. Don't blame this on one of your imaginary characters, his mom disappointedly said. You are grounded for a month and no TV or video games. Now clean this room. A whole month, Miles shot back, but it was too late. His mom had already left the room. Moments later, Moxley flew right back through the window and sat in the big blue chair once again. Miles looked over to Moxley and asked, why did you hide? But Moxley just shrugged his shoulders as if to say, I don't know. Because as everyone knows, sometimes bears don't know why they hide. Meanwhile, back at the world's greatest traveling circus, the man in the funny red coat entered Moxley's tent, only to find Moxley's big blue chair empty and his tent still a mess. Now where has that messy bear gone to this time? He asked out loud. So the man in the funny red coat swung up high, but he did not see the bear nearby. He also took a look down low, but he did not see so much as a toe. He searched in every tent and looked everywhere he went, but he could not find that bear, not so much as a scent. Where could that messy bear be, he wondered. That messy bear was, in fact, having a great time playing with his new friend, Miles. But Miles knew that at some point he had better start cleaning up his room or his mom might ground him forever. So Miles decided that every time he and Moxley played a game, they would clean something up. So as Miles threw the football to Moxley, some clothes would be put away. As they played different board games, action figures were put on display. Puzzles were completed and toy robots were defeated, but only as long as the cleaning proceeded. And so game after game, they were cleaning with aim and finally the mess they overcame. Or so Miles thought. As he looked around his room, it was actually in worse shape now than ever before. Toys and clothes were still littered all over. It looked as though nothing had even been picked up. But, but, but how is this possible, Miles wondered. He looked over to Moxley, who simply, who was simply licking his paws with a sense of accomplishment. Because everyone knows, sometimes when bears are done making a mess, they like to clean themselves. What Miles finally realized was that Moxley wasn't just any ordinary circus bear. He was the messiest circus bear there ever was. And Moxley clearly took pride in this achievement. What am I ever going to do with you? Miles wondered aloud. But just then, Miles heard his door creak open. He quickly turned around and found his mom standing in the doorway. She was surprised at what she saw. I don't believe it, she said in disbelief. Miles quickly pointed in Moxley's direction. You see, I told you there was a bear in the chair. But as Miles turned around, he disappointedly uttered, who is no longer there? Indeed, Moxley was gone once again. This room is actually worse, his stunned mom said. Miles, you give me no choice. You're grounded for two months. Two months, Miles cried. A whole two months? Miles, I'm leaving for the grocery store, his mom announced. Clean up this room and don't disturb your father while I'm gone. And no more nonsense about a bear in the chair. His mom then left the room. And right on cue, Moxley flipped right back through the window. Thanks a lot, Miles sarcastically said. But as everyone knows, bears don't understand sarcasm. So Moxley just simply saluted his approval and plopped back down into the big blue chair. Meanwhile, across town, the man in the funny red coat continued his search for his friend, that messy, troublesome bear. And since he could not find Moxley anywhere at the circus, he realized that Moxley must have gone into town all by himself. 
So he searched on the roofs of cars where Moxley would ride, on the backs of buses where Moxley could hide, in and out of ice cream shops where flavors were no more, and aisle after aisle in toy stores where toys were littered across the floor. He searched the town from beginning to end, but he just couldn't find his furry friend. Now where could that silly bear be? The man in the funny red coat asked himself. But then he suddenly realized this was Moxley he was tracking. All he had to do was follow what he called the Moxley mess. And as he looked down the street, that's all he saw, a giant mess made by Moxley. The entire street was littered with candy wrappers, toy boxes, and a trail of trash, everything he needed to lead him to his favorite troublesome bear. So as the man in the funny red coat continued his search, Moxley in the meantime was busy jumping up and down on Miles's bed as Miles was picking, as Miles picked up the mess that Moxley made. Thanks to you, Moxley, I got into a lot of trouble. Why do you always have to make such a terrible mess? Miles asked. And that's when Miles realized, oh no, I'm sounding just like my mom. But as Miles looked over to his new furry best friend, Moxley was no longer jumping up and down on the bed, nor was he in the big blue chair, and the window was closed shut. So where could he have gone? Seconds later, Miles had the answer. He noticed that his bedroom door was now wide open and there was a trail of toys that led straight to the hallway. Moxley, no, Miles cried out. He quickly ran out of his bedroom and followed the trails of toys, hoping that it would lead him straight to Moxley. As Miles headed down the hallway, he noticed that many of the family pictures on the wall were either tilted, missing, or laying broken on the floor. This was definitely the work of a circus bear. Gross! Miles heard growling from the downstairs living room. It must be Moxley. Gross! Miles rushed down the steps and ran into the living room. But to his surprise, it was not Moxley making the growling sounds. It was his dad fast asleep in his sofa, snoring as loudly as a bear. Moxley, though, had clearly made his mark in here. Miles' dad was covered in clothes from head to toe. Newspapers littered the room from above and below. Books from the shelf now covered the floor. Furniture was tipped over like never before. There was no part of this room that Circus Bear ignored. He even watched a show about bears as Miles' dad snored. Because as everyone knows, bears love to watch TV shows about bears. How did he make such a mess so fast, Miles wondered. But thankfully, his dad didn't awaken. No telling what would happen if his dad woke up to a circus bear running amok in his living room. His dad might have scared Moxley, and Miles didn't want that to happen. Miles continued to search for Moxley, following that messy bear's trail all the way to the kitchen. Of course, Miles thought, circus bears are always hungry. And as Miles entered the kitchen, he couldn't believe his eyes. It looked as though the world's largest food bomb had exploded. Scrambled eggs were on the ceiling. Chocolate cake was on the floor. Milk was dripping from the counter with pizza covering the kitchen door. There was ketchup over here and mustard over there. And all of this was done by a messy circus bear. Food, 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 everything was covered in food. Oh, this was sure to put Miles' parents in such a bad mood. I'm in so much trouble now, Miles said. I'll never be able to clean this up before mom comes home. Of course, Miles knew that if his dad woke up, he'd be grounded until he was 50. Kazoom! Moxley quickly rolled into the kitchen while balancing on a basketball. In one paw, he was spinning a plate on top of a broom handle. With the other, he was eating a quadruple layered sandwich. And as everyone knows, bears love their sandwiches. Moxley, look at the mess you've made, Miles said in defeat. Moxley smiled and took another bite of his huge sandwich in celebration of his messy accomplishment. No, you can't be like this, Moxley, Miles cried out. You've gotten me into so much trouble since you arrived. Friends don't do this to each other. Miles sat on the floor and began to cry. Moxley stepped off the basketball and put down his half-eaten sandwich 
along with a broom with a spinning plate on top. He noticed that he had upset his new best friend. This made Moxley sad as well. He never meant to upset Miles. He thought that he and Miles were just having fun. I mean, isn't making messes lots of fun? But Moxley didn't realize until just that moment that maybe it's not so much fun when it meant always getting into trouble and causing problems for others. Moxley now understood that in order for a friendship to succeed, he had to think about someone other than himself. And he now knew that he had to do one thing that he had never, ever done in his entire life in order to help keep his friend Miles out of trouble. He had to clean up. And that's when Moxley picked up the broom and began to sweep. Miles stopped crying and looked up. I don't believe it, he said stunned. Moxley, are you really cleaning? Moxley jumped on top of the basketball and used it to roll across the floor, sweeping almost the entire thing clean in seconds. But of course, Moxley, being Moxley, he left a few scraps of food on the floor that he still wanted to eat. Miles began to laugh at the silly, wondrous sight of Moxley cleaning. And as everyone knows, when bears do clean, they like to clean quickly. And Miles knew if he wanted to get the house cleaned before his mom got home and his dad woke up, he had better help out too. So as Miles scrubbed the eggs from the ceiling, Moxley licked the cake from the floor. Miles cleaned the milk from the counter as Moxley ate the pizza from the kitchen door. They put the clothes back in the hamper and the books back on the shelf. Moxley turned the furniture upright while Miles stacked the newspapers himself. Clean, clean, clean is what these two did well as best as they could. For the messiest bear and kid and sleeping in his chair, still unaware, was Miles' dad still snoring like a bear. Gross! The house had never looked so clean, Miles proudly said. I believe that both of us make a good team. Miles and Moxley shook hands, or from Moxley's perspective, they shook paws. Moments later, Miles' mom entered the house carrying bags of groceries. I hope you finally cleaned up that room, young man, she yelled from the doorway. Oh no, Miles shouted, we forgot to clean my room. Moxley quickly threw Miles onto his back, grabbed his half-eaten sandwich and leapt up the stairway unnoticed. This proved to be great fun for Miles as he had never ridden piggyback on a sandwich-eaten circus bear before. Unfortunately for Miles, the fun stopped when they entered his disaster of a bedroom. It was a terrible mess. What are we going to do, Moxley? Miles asked in a panic. Moxley picked up a toy robot from the floor and placed it inside Miles' toy chest. Good idea, Miles proudly said. And with the desperation of a young boy and the agility of a circus bear, they quickly began the impossible task of finally cleaning up Miles' room. So as Miles put his clothes back in the drawer, Moxley picked the action figures from the floor. The bear then juggled the marbles back in their tray as Miles threw the basketball out of the way. With building blocks stacked and board games packed, Miles' room was finally intact. Knock, 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 knock. His mom was at the door, but there was no reason to panic because the mess was no more. And as the door swung open, Miles' mom was in a shock. My room is clean, Miles said. You won't find so much as a sock. But it wasn't the clean room that gave Miles' mom the scare. It was the incredible sight of the bear in the chair. There is a bear in your chair, Miles' mom screamed. Miles realized he had forgotten all about Moxley, and Moxley didn't feel like hiding this time. He was too busy eating his sandwich in the big blue chair. And as everyone knows, because it's worth repeating, bears love their sandwiches. I told you there was a bear in the chair, Miles said confidently. His name is Moxley and he's a circus bear. Miles, get away from him. He might be dangerous, his mom said in a panic. And as Miles' mom freaked out, Moxley got nervous. He took a sandwich and climbed out of the window. Mom, he's not dangerous. He's my best friend. Don't scare him away, Miles pleaded. Miles, stay here. Don't leave your room, his mom said. She then ran out of the bedroom in a rush. Meanwhile, Moxley climbed to the roof of the house where he continued to eat a sandwich. A crowd of people from all around town began to gather to watch the strange sight of a sandwich-eating bear on the roof of Miles' house. 
Miles' mom and dad exited the house and joined the crowd as they watched in curiosity. Honey, why is there a sandwich eating bear on the roof of our house? Miles' dad questioned. He was sitting in Miles' chair, Miles' mom answered. A bear in the chair? Miles' dad wondered out loud. How did he get there? Moxley, of course, was enjoying all of this attention, being a circus bear and all. He liked that all the people were watching him. And as Moxley looked out into the crowd, he recognized one of those people. It was his friend, the man in the funny red coat and black top hat. He had followed the Moxley mess all the way to Miles' house. The man in the funny red coat waved to Moxley, and Moxley waved back to his friend on the ground. Just then, Miles poked his head out the window. He yelled up to Moxley and said, Moxley, come back in here. It's not safe up there. But for a circus bear that is used to heights, it's very safe. And as Miles tried to get Moxley off the roof and back into the house, he leaned too far out of the window, lost his balance, and fell. The crowd of people gasped, but Miles managed to cling to the window, still dangling. Oh my, Miles' mom shouted. Miles, hang on. Moxley, fearing for his friend's safety, dropped his sandwich and quickly climbed down from the roof. He grabbed a hold of Miles, swung him onto his back, and climbed back up to the top of the house. Miles was safe. The crowd cheered. Moxley picked up his sandwich and continued eating it, sharing the rest of it with his new best friend, Miles, sitting at his side. The man in the funny red coat addressed the happy crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, let me make you aware. You have just witnessed a fantastic feat from Moxley, the amazing acrobatic bear, the star attraction of the world's greatest traveling circus. Moxley jumped into action and did a backflip for the crowd. He then leapt into a handstand. The crowd applauded. Moxley then flipped to his feet, swung Miles onto his back, and safely jumped off the roof in a way only a circus bear could. And as soon as Miles jumped off Moxley's back, Miles's mom ran up to him and gave him a big hug. Am I still in trouble? Miles questioned. Miles' mom turned to his dad. Well, she said, smiling, he did finally clean up his room. I think we can make an exception this time, his dad said, laughing. At that moment, the man in the funny red coat made a great announcement. In celebration of this wonderful occasion, I invite the entire town to come see Moxley, the amazing acrobatic bear, and all of our other spectacular attractions for a free show tonight. The crowd applauded and cheered once again. The man in the funny red coat knew this was the least he could do, considering the mess that Moxie had left all around town. The man in the funny red coat then walked over to Moxley and said, Moxley, my friend, it's time we head back home to the circus now. Moxley removed the green fisherman's hat from on top of his head and handed it back to Miles. But Miles took the hat and put it back on Moxley's head. I think you should keep it, Miles said. It looks good on you. Moxley then wanted to give Miles a gift. He removed his tag and offered it to his friend, but Miles declined. You better hold on to that, he told Moxley. I have a feeling you might need it again. The man in the funny red coat laughed and said, yes, indeed, he might. Moxley nodded in agreement. Miles put the name tag back around Moxley's neck and gave him a big hug. This is the only gift I need, Miles said, and Moxley hugged Miles right back. As it turned out, Moxley liked giving the gift of hugging. And as everyone knows, bears give the greatest hugs. The man in the funny red coat took a hold of Moxley's paw and began to walk away with him. Moxley stopped, turned around, and waved goodbye to his friend Miles. Miles smiled and waved goodbye to his friend Moxley. Then the man in the funny red coat and Moxley continued on their journey back to the circus. Later that night, Miles, his mother, his dad, and the entire town were sitting inside the circus tent watching Moxley and all the other circus acts perform great and amazing acrobatic feats. And at the end of every stunt that Moxley performed, he returned to his big blue chair in the center of the ring. Miles smiled turned to his parents and said, that's my bear in the chair.
And that's the end of our story. I hope you enjoyed hearing about Moxley and Miles and all of their adventures together. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe to support our channel.